Becoming Supernatural is Joe Dispenza's combination of neuroscience and quantum physics with consciousness and healing practices. It's best to go into a book like this with an open mind, but don't follow it like a religion. Meditation, being more present, awareness, and learning to breathe correctly are skills anyone can learn to improve their lives. Some of the practices in the book are pretty good and worth a try. Let's break down this book's key themes and see if Dr. Joe is onto something or just showing off a bunch of random studies. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Let us know in the comments if you've tried Dr. Joe's teachings and what your experience has been like. Who is Dr. Joe? He's a doctor of chiropractic from Life University and researcher on the effects of meditation and self-healing. He and his team do brain mapping with electroencephalograms, EEGs, and individual energy field testing with a gas discharge visualization machine as well as measure both heart coherence with heart math monitors and the energy present in the workshop environment before, during, and after events with a GDV Sputnik sensor. Soon, he plans to include epigenetic testing in this research as well. Dr. Joe was in a terrible cycling accident that left him with six compressed vertebrae. He was told he'd never walk again. Instead of getting surgery, Dr. Joe visualized reconstructing each vertebrae of his spine with his mind. In 12 weeks he was back to work at his chiropractic clinic and fully healed. All with his mind. An hour. Hit me from behind and catapulted me out of my bicycle. The compressive force compressed six vertebrae in my spine. The prognosis was I'd probably never walk again uh, and that uh, I needed a radical surgery called the Harrington Rod Surgery. If this had been anybody else, I probably would have recommended that they had the surgery, uh, but this was me. I decided to check out of the hospital, and I just had this one thought, and the thought was the power that made the body heals the body. So uh, I would start off in my mind reconstructing my spine vertebrae per vertebrae, and then I'd start thinking about living in a wheelchair. So for six weeks, I went through this incredible dark night of the soul because I couldn't really get my mind to do what I wanted it to do. And it would take me about three hours in closing my eyes and reconstructing every single vertebrae. I'm starting over again every time I lost my attention. At the end of six weeks, I went through the whole entire process without losing my attention. And it was like I hit a tennis ball in the sweet spot. Something clicked in that moment, I clicked. I started noticing significant changes in my body. My motor functions started coming back and my body began to change dramatically. And I was back on my feet in 10 weeks and um, back training again at 12 weeks. And I just made a deal with myself. And the deal was that if I was ever able to walk again, I'd spend the rest of my life studying the mind-body connection and mind over matter. And pretty much that's what I've been doing since 1980. So how did that happen? Dr. Joe spends some time explaining quantum field theory. The theory explains that particles are excitations in fields that propagate throughout the universe. So the universe we experience and all the particles and atoms we interact with are really all of these fields interacting with each other and exchanging energy. Since particles are not viewed as distinct entities or points with well-defined trajectories, their behavior becomes probabilistic and wave-like. Even the empty vacuum of space has fluctuations demonstrated with the Casimir effect. Then there's quantum entanglement or, as Einstein put it, spooky action at a distance, in which two particles can be in an entangled state. No matter the distance, as soon as one particle's state is changed, the other changes instantly. This gives us the image of a universe that is a buzz of vibrations through all these fields. This is just the cool-sounding quantum field theory examples. As accurate as the theory is, in reality the theory is computationally very difficult. Not even supercomputers can keep up. And it's incomplete. There's no explanation for gravity and it only explains the interactions of about 5% of the total amount of energy of the universe. There's 25% of energy in dark matter, which we kind of know is there due to gravitational lensing. And another 70% in dark energy, which is just um, there. 
Using this as his scientific foundation, Dr. Joe makes the leap that if you can connect with these quantum fields you can control the output. Create your wants and desires and even heal yourself. Dr. Joe spends a lot of time on the pineal gland, as most spiritually based practices do. This is a small pinecone-shaped endocrine gland located in the center of the brain, near the base. Its primary purpose is regulating melatonin for your circadian rhythm, the sleep-wake cycle. It's unique in that it has its own photoreceptor cells to know how much light there is to regulate melatonin production. It was really interesting to learn about ancient cultures and their spiritual beliefs and practices related to the pineal gland. Dr. Joe goes on to explain how this gland is the antenna that we use to tune into the quantum fields. Finding the right frequency to vibrate at allows one to tap into the unlimited potential of possibilities. Dr. Joe goes into the different brainwave frequencies and what states of mind they put you in. Alpha waves, you're in a more creative mindset. Beta, you're awake and alert. Theta, relaxed. And delta, you're in a deep sleep cycle. You can use binaural beats to manipulate these states, where you listen to different frequencies in each ear and your brain creates a third tone. If you are just starting meditation these can be very helpful aids to get you comfortable and into a consistent practice. Dr. Joe has plenty of them out there. An interesting breathing technique he gives in the book is when sitting, perform a kegel at your base and imagine you're holding your energy. While inhaling, pull that energy up your spine to the top of your head and hold for as long as you can and exhale. You may feel your head ring like a bell. According to Dr. Joe this is the cerebral spinal fluid being pulled up from the base and activating your pineal gland. In explaining all these different areas of science and spirituality he makes sure to reference scientific studies and testimonials, a common feature in the book. A really interesting testimonial on how the body has memories attached to it and the power of the heart goes like this, a girl receives a heart transplant and begins having vivid night terrors of being murdered. It turns out the heart she received was from a girl who was recently killed. Working with a sketch artist, the police were able to identify, find, and prosecute the murderer. From here, we'll jump into the mind-body dualism and how Dr. Joe brings them together. Relying on neuroscience he explains the brain's plasticity and its ability to rewire itself. He goes on to explain that what you think and the mindset you have will be reflected not only in your body but also in gene expression. So if you constantly tell yourself that you're sick and that everything is wrong then your body and genes will follow with poor health and just surviving. But the opposite will happen if you shift yourself to a positive mindset allowing your body to do what it does and heal itself and thrive in creativity. Apart from neuroscience, Dr. Joe leans into the yoga practices and teachings of chakras and energy centers of the body. To give a brief overview, your lower energy centers are related to your physical body and basic human necessities, like eating and reproducing. And the higher energy centers are part of creating your reality. He goes on to explain that it's easy to reside in lower vibrating states and feed a cycle of negativity, storing emotions as ailments in the body. But in as little as four days of meditation you can begin to break that cycle and shift that energy. And through different meditations you can raise your vibration and connections to the quantum field, heal yourself, and create your desired life. Again he has a lot of different content out there, you can pick one and go. Dr. Joe references a bunch of different brain scan studies that have been performed. Scanning a monk's brain while meditating is always interesting. In short, this is how Dr. Joe claims to have healed his six compressed vertebrae. Is it true? That's for you to be the judge of. Like I said in the beginning, learning how to meditate and breathing properly are great practices for anyone to learn and can improve your quality of life greatly. And Dr. Joe gives us some neat studies to support it. Now for some criticisms. Dr. Joe isn't really discovering anything new here. He's packaging up a lot of other people's work and making it fit a specific narrative. He has very little original data-driven research that is published in a scientific journals. As for all the quantum mechanics stuff, it really isn't needed at all. Quantum field theory is not designed or intended to be used to explain consciousness. PBS Spacetime does a good job explaining. There's even the interpretation of quantum mechanics called superdeterminism, where there's no free will. 
Dr. Joe's ideas are based on the idea that consciousness is some quantum universal force, which is still being studied. Check out Sabine Hassenfelder, an actual physicist, for more. The information of the different energy levels combined with the spirituality stuff is entertaining, but again nothing new. You can find similar studies and almost word-for-word -word references in other New Age healer books. The power of positive thinking has been around for a long time and marketed a lot of different ways. At times I'm reminded of Pastor Dr. Norman Vincent Peale and his power of positive thinking. The pastor of the Trump family who shaped Donald Trump's mindset according to a 2009 Psychology Today interview. No longer negatively defeated, but positive, hopeful, optimistic, victorious. For 50 years, Peel was pastor of Marble Collegiate Church in New York. For many years, Trump's parents sat in the pews listening, and so did a young Donald. The message of positivity began to take hold. One reason that the positive thinker gets positive results is he is not afraid of a problem. As a matter of fact, he finds problems exciting. He likes to take a tough, knotty problem and rip it apart and put it together again in the right manner. With a father who preached much the same philosophy, Trump became sold on it. His father, Fred, actually became good friends with Peel, and the pastor married Trump and his first wife, Ivana. Decades later, Trump told Psychology Today magazine, quote, I'm a cautious optimist, but also a firm believer in the power of being positive. I think that helped. I refuse to be sucked into negative thinking on any level, even when the indications weren't great. That was a good lesson because I emerged on a very victorious level. It's a good way to go. And when we interviewed the future president during his run for the presidency, Peel's impact on his life was top of mind. You know, the greatest speaker I think I've ever witnessed was Dr. Norman Vincent Peel. Mm. And he would speak the power of positive thinking. He would speak so much and he'd bring it into modern day life. He'd talk about success stories and people that were successful and became alcoholics and then they conquered it. And I grew up watching that. He wasn't reading like, and I've had plenty of pastors and ministers that read. It's not the same thing. Norman Vincent Peel would get up and his arms would be flailing. And you hated to leave church because you wanted him to go on further.